Come on, there's got to be a way to turn that off. That's so annoying. Matt's Maker's Face. How are you doing today? Doing all right. I think I finally recovered from Rocky Mountain Murr. <laughs> I haven't even turned on a 3D printer in the last week, but I got some stuff I want to print tonight. <laughs> the um, Rocky Mountain Murr just wiped me out. Jesus. Didn't no damage or anything. Just it just physically just exhausted me. To, it was like wow. <laughs> Guess my body was not prepared for that. <sighs> Worth it, though. But tonight, I'm going to finish the files for the um, the advanced um, Pringles rocket, where they thread together. I got some beauty rings that I want to design for the ends of the Pringles can, because the cardboard tends to fray. Hey, DeWitt. Hey, 3D Medic. So I want to work on designing those um, beauty rings to finish off that model. I also finally got my little um, decoy triggers for USB C PD. Um, USB C power delivery or PD is interesting because it can put out different voltages. It actually has specifications for 5 volts, 9 volts, 12 volts, and 20 volts. Um, so what these are, are little decoy triggers to, um, they send back the appropriate signal or have whatever resistor or diode or whatever is required to trigger the charger itself. So you have a USB-C PD charger like this. So that's regular USB. That's a PD port. It's a 20 watt PD charger. Um, so this is able to, on some level, communicate with whatever device you plug into it. So when I plug my phone into this, there's a, when you use a proper USB-C cable. Seriously? Who that is, don't care. Uh, when you plug in a proper USB-C PD cable and you plug that cable into your phone, there, um, there is some level of communications that goes on between the devices. The the shed, no, nope, never finished. And looks like the guy who um, I bartered a bunch of stuff for, to um, to finish it. Uh, looks like he burned me. He he keeps saying he'll come and do it, but it's been a year and a half, and he still hasn't come. <laughs> Every few months I bug him and he says, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, and then he never shows, so I doubt he's ever going to show up. That sucks. I gave him like a thousand dollars worth of stuff. Apparently that's pretty common out here. <laughs> um, oh well, what am I going to do about it? Yeah, because I could really use that space. Just just being able to put the washer and dryer out there would be a huge blessing because then I'd have all that space inside because I'd like to move my water heater in here um, and I'd like to get rid of that outside access. Yes, eat him. Yum, 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 yum. <laughs> I don't think he's a bad guy. I think he's just busy 
And the, the, the problem with basically by giving him the stuff already, I've already paid him. And the problem is when the, when you have a person who doesn't exactly have the greatest moral standards, I'm not saying he's a bad person. Um, I actually think he's a pretty decent person. But um, a lot of the people won't count what they already got as payment. To them, it's like, well, I need pay now. What do I get now? It's like, no, I already paid you. <laughs> but they need pay now. You see what I mean? The, to, from their perspective, that's the past. And it's like, well, it's not the past to me because I gave you the stuff and I never got in return. You know, and that's the catch-22 you create there. It's why it's, it's why it's usually a bad idea to prepay. And, um, what are you going to do? Maybe he'll come through. Who knows? But, um, hopefully the wood and everything is not destroyed by the time he comes through. Because I have no money for materials. But, um, I just need a roof on it. At this point, I just need a roof on it so I can use the space. And, uh. Because what I'd really like to do is put the washer and dryer out there. The freezers out there. And I'd, uh, that would also give me a space to put the exercise bike. Because I, I have no space in the house to put the exercise bike. It's too big. Um, I could put it in the bathroom. But I would have to get rid of four printers from the bathroom. And especially now that I can use more printers. I don't want to do that. But with the shed, I could just put it out there. Um, but, um, USB-C PD is capable of putting out up to 5 amps, so up to 100 watts, at, um, 5 volt, 9 volt, 12 volt, and 20 volt. Well, what's interesting is a lot of things can run at those different voltages. There's a lot of devices out there that'll run off of 9 volts or 12 volts. And in fact, if you have any 12, 24 volt equipment, you might be able to run it at 20 volts. Um, it depends on how complex the circuitry is. Hey, Jerry. Because, um, well, the advantage is 100 watts at 20 volts is going to produce a lot less heat than 100 watts at 12 volts. Um, so I should be able to, for example, the I got these little PD triggers. So these two devices, I don't know if they actually communicate... Like, I don't know if it's bi-directional communication, but um, we can consider it bi-directional communication. But basically, there's something in here that negotiates with something in here and says, I can accept this. You, what you'll do is you'll plug a PD device in. You'll see it'll go like one watt and then two watts, four watts, something like that. And then it'll go back down to zero watts. And then it'll go back to, so it'll be like three watts or two watts or four watts. And then it goes to zero. And then it starts escalating. You'll see it go 2, 4, 6, 8, 12, 15, 20. You know, it'll start going up in wattage. And that's because what happens when you initially plugged in, it was at 5 volts. That's because if you start off at 20 and you plug in this, it's going to explode. <laughs> so it starts off at the default of 5. And then this device says, oh, by the way, I can take, you know, I can take 12 volts or I can take 20 volts. And this device says, oh, okay, now let's renegotiate and I'll switch up the voltage. Well, these are neat little things called decoy triggers. And so what these do is they they have whatever circuitry is needed. This one has dip switches, so you can actually adjust it. Um, and this will tell the PD charger, oh, by the way, I could take 20 volts. <laughs> or I could take 12 volts. Or I could take 9 volts. So, for example, you could make your cordless phone USB-C. You could make your you know, 12 volt, 24 volt fridge freezer USB-C. <laughs> so all these devices that you have that run off of 9 volts, 12 volts, 20 volts, or 5 volts, you can now run them all on USB-C because you can install one of these little decoy triggers that will go, oh yeah, I'm a phone. I take 12 volts, you know, 5 amps. And the charger will go, okay, no problem. Here's 12 volt 5 amps. <laughs> and then you just have this jumper box here, like on your 3D printer here. You plug your wires in. And plug it into whatever you want. And these are about a buck fifty a piece. Well, a buck seventy is a, it's like three dollars and fifty two cents for a pair of them. I found one seller on AliExpress who has a deal 
where you get two of them for like 350 or 360 but you can only get two so i have to order and then the next day i order another two and the next day i order another two <laughs> so eventually i'll have a bunch of these but um this will allow me to basically convert everything to USB-C. As long as whatever you have. Um, you can't control anything with NFC. That's not quite how that works. Um, NFC contains passive information. Um, I can't link them. It's on the AliExpress app. So, But you can find them on Amazon, eBay, or AliExpress. What you're looking for is a USB-C decoy trigger those two words are what they tend to use in fact it's creating a problem because i want a 100 watt usb 12 volt adapter meaning i want to be able to have usb c pd power from my car without having to you know plug in a 12 volt version of this you know i want the raw circuitry that i can hardwire to a battery and i can't find them because the triggers are what comes up all day <laughs> um but here let me show you I could turn that off. Do I have the app installed on here? I don't think I do. No. That is only on this device. I figured out how to lower my cell phone costs. So right now, um, we're paying 15 bucks a line. And I think I figured out how to reduce that to around... Um, so right now, it's $55 a month for our phones. And I figured out how to reduce that to approximately um, to less than twenty dollars a month. So right around eighteen bucks a month. They have a cell phone provider called Red Pocket, and they have one plan. You pay thirty bucks and you get twelve months of service. Now you don't get much. You get I think it's five hundred minutes, five hundred texts, and five hundred megabytes of data per month. But I don't even use one hundred, one hundred, one hundred on this device. I just need the connectivity. So I'll be able to, for the cost of two months of service now, I'll be able to have a whole year. And then um, on the other one, I will, um, I'll get the one gigabyte service, which is eight fifty two a month. Um, what I'm trying to find out from them is they say you get one gigabyte, it's unlimited data, but you get one gigabyte of high speed data. Well, what is low speed data? Are we talking 4G speeds, which is fine? Are we talking 3G speeds, which is okay? Or are you really just turning off the service by declaring 2G speeds, which basically means no service? 2G is actually pretty decent speed, but in the United States, 2G means basically nothing. They turn it down to basically zero. But if it's still at least 3G or 4G speed, then I'm okay with that. I use mostly Wi-Fi anyway. Um, I'm averaging around 2 gigabytes a day, and that's purposely using the cell phone data because why not? um but here check this out so first of all the where's my thing spot camera um they have they have lowered the price to a dollar 79 for that um where you could buy three to ten items per day um per order so now it's a buck 79 an item which is pretty damn cool but that isn't there where that is, is CX, go away. So you uh, basically, I was just scrolling through here. So USB C decoy. And these start coming up. And what I do is I look for this one here that has the switch. So this one has switches. So you don't have to do any soldering. You don't have to do any of, you know, is there anything I could do about that? Let's see here. Um, first, can I stretch this? Sort of. So what I want to do is I want to get it close to the edge, like that. Yeah, I want to do that. But I don't want this in my face. So now bring that there like this I gotta set up a dedicated way of doing this I know there's a way to do it okay 
now let's do rotations. Let's see. Well, first let's make sure this is selected. Transform. Let's rotate 180, which puts it over here now, I think. Yeah. Oh, good. This is a better spot anyway. And now we need to mirror it. Transform. Flip horizontal. And that put it back over here, didn't it? Yes, it did. <laughs> um, so here, you want this kind here. Um, which is still not bad, but I'd rather get them cheap. Now, this one's actually expensive because this one has shipping. See how this one says 219 shipping? So you keep looking. Now, does that one have specific wording? Uh, trigger board. Okay. So let's change it to trigger board since we know that one uses those words. Let's do two PCS and see if that comes up. Actually, I need to add an angle in order to get rid of that glare. There we go. That actually works pretty good. It's not perfect, but it will work. So what we do is we look for um, the ones with the switches. Here we go. There it is. Now that one's shipping, so we don't want that one. Although that's, still, that's not bad. That's two dollars plus two dollars. So it's only two bucks each. Exactly. The well. Once you set it, you're never going to change it. It's going to be a permanent part of whatever device you install it into. So the reality is you could save a lot of money by buying the ones that don't require any kind of soldering. Um, and they're also smaller. Here we go. There it is. That's it right there. $3.52, free shipping. So that means those are only $1.61 a piece. Um, so I'm going to 3D print a box to um, design to build this into my little refrigerator freezer unit thing there. So that I can, instead of having to, um, you know, basically I want to be able to run them off a USB-C power supply. Um, especially because they only take like 60 watts in regular mode and 30 watts in um, eco mode. So I can run them off, of, you know, even like a 40 or 50 watt or a 60 watt USB-C power supply. Although I tend to use 100 watt um, units because then I know all my units are 100 watts. And also that means if you are if you have a 100 watt unit and you're only drawing 30 watts, it won't get as hot. Well, if you have a 30 watt unit, you're maxing it out. So I'd rather not max it out. Um, but yeah, that allows... and in, in fact, in theory, you can set up a couple of these and you can make your own little universal power supply kind of deal. But it's kind of neat to be able to take a little widget like that and um, now know that with one with one standardized USB-C PD connection, I can now power um, an array of devices, especially because 9 volts and 12 volts are very, very common power supply voltages. So basically, if you have a cordless phone, like, I, I, I do have a cordless phone. We have it hooked up to a VoIP, um, to a VoIP to use Google Voice. I haven't hooked it up yet. But um, if you have a cordless phone, um, they're 9 volts. <laughs> so now you can run them off USB-C PD. And the cool thing about that is now your, your battery packs that you have, you know, now you can use this to run all those devices too. So in a power out scenario, boom, you now have everything running. And it's all universal USB-C, which is really freaking nice. <laughs> Especially because you can get those cables for $1.79, which is really, really nice. You know, I get these, um, where is it at? Yeah. I get these nice USB-C cables with the built-in display. Um, right, right there. With the built-in display for $1.79. I... Oh, a Thingiverse donation? I didn't see that. Hang on. I think somebody sent me a PayPal. Was that you? That might have been you. Oop. Yeah, I hit that. 
I think somebody did say thank you for making the hot end model and sent me a donation. Um, let's see if that was you. YouTube is not receiving enough what? Enough video to maintain smooth streaming. Why would I have a problem with my connection? I'm connected to my regular network. What's the problem? The video might look a little goofy. It's telling me there's errors. It's not even... Oh, here it is. Uh, oh, yeah. 1.1% drop frames. So definitely a bandwidth issue. But it hasn't dropped any more. 419 frames. We'll have to just go with it. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, continue on web. Activity. Yes. You sent me 12 bucks, Colin. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Yep, just a thank you for your hot end model. I belong to Tesside Hackspace in the UK. So thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Um, This should be correct now. Is it still mirrored? On my OBS screen, I can read this. This is normal now. Is this still mirrored for you guys? Looks fine? Okay, good. Let's see here. Uh, so, um... Yeah, these are really freaking nice. So now if you don't need that, so for example, this one here is $11 and change and you get 10 of them and you could probably get cheaper than that. Um, now remember, these aren't actually doing any conversion. The power is just passing through them. Um, this device here, your charger actually handles the switch between 5 volt, 9 volt, 12 volt and 20 volt. All this board is doing is tricking this device into sending your desired um, power output. Um, so that's really handy. Like, I, for example, I plan to, I plan, matter of fact, the reason I have this one out here <laughs> is because later today, I'm going to convert one of my Ender 2s to be USB-C powered. <laughs> yeah, one of my Ender 2s is going to be USB-C powered. I'm even thinking about um, um, putting a relay for the heat bed because one of the problems that I have is that most of these devices, um, these they have pretty lackluster. So these devices, um, they have pretty lackluster 12 volt output. It's usually limited to 10 amps and that's shared amongst all three connections. So you have two um 55 10 barrel plugs and then you have the standard you know cigarette outlet plug um so even though this could put out two, 10 amps it's not 10 10 and 10 it's 10 amongst all three um however i could put out the power that the printer itself needs over usb c pd right there i only need 45 watts so if i hook the heat bed output to a um, directly to 12 volts, meaning I bypass the power supply built into the printer. Um, two things happen. One, I can, well, I don't need a power supply at all. I'm running it directly off 12 volts. And with this, it'll be running off USB-C PD. And then I can just have a barrel jack to run the heat bed. This way, the full 10 amps can go to the heat bed if I want to use a heat bed. So basically, my, um, my Ender 3 will have two plugs. It'll have a barrel jack plug, which I can plug in if I want a heat bed. Um, I could also make that a second USB-C port. So if I have two USB-C PD ports, I can use two of them. Um, but the cool thing is, now my Ender 3 will be USB-C PD powered. That's really cool. <laughs> um, just the idea that I can have a USB-C um, 
a USB-C printer is pretty neat. So the next question is, newer printers like the Ender 3, for example, are 24 volts. Will they work at 20 volts? I mean, it's only 50 watts. Uh, so the question is, can I run the printer? Yeah, the max, it's, it's 5 volt, 9 volt, 12 volt, or 20 volt. That's it. Those are your four voltages that you can use on USB-C PD. So I can set these dip switches to either put out 5, 9, 12, or um, 20 volts. Um, so the question is, will a 24-volt printer work at 20 volts? I'm going to find out. <laughs> um, because that means I'll be able to basically run any printer on USB-C. No heat bed, but that's okay. I'm, I'm going for not using heat bed anyway. Um, now, of course, this is not going to do that because this is only a 20-watt USB-C PD um, plug. Let me see here. It's really annoying that I can't read these things very well. Well, I'm thinking because I'm only drawing 40 or 50 watts that it might actually not throw too much of a fit. So this outputs... Okay, this one stops at 12 volts, so this one doesn't do 20 volts. Uh, so this one will do 12 volts at 1.67 amps, um, 9 volts at 2.25 amps, and 5 volts at 3.2 amps. And, um, oh, the regular USB-C port will do 12 volts at 1.5 amps too. That's pretty cool. which also means I might be able to simply use a different heating element on the heat bed. So for example, I can get a CATS um, oil pan heater that's 25 watts. And 25 watts is more than enough to heat up a bed size of an Ender 2 or an Ender 3. Um, Um, I'm pretty sure, no, the 5 volts comes from the motherboard. Oh, you mean if I'm not running 24 volts, then the 5 volt, 3 volt might also go down? <coughs> because the 5 volt, 3 volt comes from the brain board. That does not come from the power supply. Your 24 volt power supply is strictly a 24 volt power supply. There's no 5 volt rail. There's no 3 volt rail. That comes from the brain board. But I see what you mean. It, it might be, if I go from 24 to 20 volts then the five volts might go to like four and a half volts. I don't know. I guess we'll have to test it. What, Michelle? Okay. Yeah, so they might get grumpy. Now, most of them will have a range because voltage, if you if you plug a, a voltmeter into your power supply, it's not 24 volts. It's 23 and a half. It's 22.9. It's 25.6. You know, those voltages are all over the place sometimes. So they should already be capable of handling some variance. I'm hoping 4 volts is within that variance. But if not, even just being able to run my... Um, my um, my Ender 2s on 12 volts would be fine for me. Um, now, I could also use a buck boost to boost the... Because once it goes through this board here... Um, it's just a dumb 20 volt output. So I could buck boost that to 24 volts. Yeah, because most of those boards will run on 12 or 24 volts. So in theory, they should be able to handle in between 18 volts, 20 volts, stuff like that. Because I've also wanted to try to run... I've also thought it would be neat to make a, um, a DeWalt powered 3D printer, you know, just for shiggles run a 3d printer off one of my battery my power tool battery packs just because why not <laughs> oh yeah i have all 100 watt USB-C cables matter of fact um i typically only have two kinds of cables i have cheap cables like this you know that'll handle you know two amps but these cables are actually important because there are some devices that will not charge off USB-C pd like, for example, this will not... You, you can't burn your house down with 20 volts, 5 amps. <laughs> it's not enough power. Um, 
But um, no heat up. Oh, oh, you mean the hot end? I can't imagine it takes that much. I have a hundred watts available, and my my stoic is forty five watts. So I got fifty five watts available for the initial heat up. So I can't imagine it's that much. I'll find out. Um, so for example, this here little USB C light. By the way, these are still available on the AliExpress. I I can't give you an affiliate link. If you appreciate it, send me a tip. But these things are amazing. <laughs> They're different though. They're not all the same. So for example, this one's my favorite one because it has memory. So when I turn this on, it go, you got you got bright, um, you got bright, lower, and then you have flashing. I wish it didn't have the flashing, but whatever. Um, it also self-regulates down, so you put it on bright after about a minute or so, it goes down to the setting all by itself. Um but this one, if you have it on for more than like, and then you hit the power button again, it doesn't cycle. It just turns off, which is what I want. Um, but some of these don't do that. Even if they're on for five minutes, they still go low flash off. So, oh, I got a bad connection again. I wonder why my connection keeps being weird. You okay, Michelle? I just lost another 400 frames. Um, I guess because they're cheap or they didn't think of it, whatever. But the point is, if I plug this PD charger and this 100 watt PD cable into this device, it won't charge. So I still need these dummy cables, these older cables that default to the 5 volts so that I can charge up little widgets like this. Uh, no, I'd, I'd rather lose 400 pounds. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll take 400 pounds. I mean, I'd be dead, but I wouldn't be 460 pounds anymore. <laughs> um, but, um, uh, so these are going to be, I'm going to be making a lot of projects with these just because it's going to be neat to be able to run everything off USB-C. Just to be able to have a standardized, universal cable and power supply that runs everything because i have like seven of the 100 watt power supplies um so that'll be that'll be really interesting it's also going to be especially interesting for people who run run off-grid solar applications or mobile rigs in their car stuff like that because um um it's just more convenient to have one kind of power supply instead of needing a power brick for this and an inverter for that and this and that and It'd be a pain in the ass. So being able to go, everything here is USB-C is really handy. It's just, it's really nice. Um, I don't know how efficient it is, though. It'll be interesting. It's it's hard to measure this kind of stuff because, like, you know, you get a kilowatt, for example. But most of those meters suck at measuring really tiny draws. Like, like when we're talking watts. And, you know, they're, they're made for measuring kilowatts, not for measuring watts. So when you have a device that only takes, you know, half a watt, one watt, two watts, three watts, they kind of suck at measuring it. Although usually they can average out over time okay. Um, but it'll be interesting to see... What the hell is going on here? Now it says excellent connection again. What is going on? It's like the streaming software restarting because now it's back to drop frame zero. But it says I've been live for 35 minutes. What? Oh, it's being weird. Um, yeah, it's not working well. I, I don't know why. The router looks good. Unless Comcast is having issues again. I should have rebooted the router and the modem before starting the stream. No, it's probably not you. I'm, I'm I'm having issues on this end. I'm getting warnings pop. Like right now, nothing. It says it's fine. I'm putting out 2,600 kilobits, no drop frames. It says we're good. Um, although keep in mind, every time YouTube glitches, it's probably going to drop you down to 360p, 240p, 480p. So you're going to have to change it back to 720p. 
Um, so if like right now, if your video looks really eh, okay, just go into YouTube and change it back to 720p or 1080p. Um, that's a common thing. My end will glitch out and then um, your end will try to compensate for that by lowering the bandwidth. Um, and then it doesn't go back to the higher bandwidth when the problem goes away. So you're stuck with a low quality stream. So if that happens for you, just click that little gear and change it back to 720 or 1080p. Um, so these are neat. They're dirt cheap and they're very cool. Um, I, I got pissed off because I got one of these little flashlights. You know, I, I knew it was probably going to be junk. And, or I thought I was going to get a cheap knockoff without batteries. But it's actually complete. Well, here's the thing. It's plastic. <laughs> it's nothing. It looks like that nice metal flashlight that you see all over the place. Um, I was pissed off at first. I was like, oh, man, they sure made that look like it was the nice metal one. But for $1.80, it's really not bad. I mean, it's got it's got cheap little LEDs there. But as you can see, they're crazy bright. And they're actually focused. You see, the, the, there's actually a, you see it up there on the wall. It actually has a decent focus. They got the four lights aligned. I'm impressed. It's even got a meter to show how much power it has. It has a low setting, and it has a really bright cob light. So it has a nice work area cob light. This is great. You can just stand it up, and it lights up an area. You know, as a flashlight, you know, as a, you know, a high-end flashlight, it's garbage. But um, for two bucks, not bad. A micro USB charging port. I mean, it doesn't weigh much, so that battery can't be very big inside of there. But um, it's got high, low, and flash. And then it's got the cob work light. And then off, it's got the four little indicators for how much power is in there. Not freaking bad for two bucks. I mean, I'm actually impressed. Um, I, it's got screws, so I might try to take it apart and maybe see if we can put a bigger battery in there. Although it might not need it. I'll have to see what the runtime is, but... Not bad. I just wish it was USB-C. Uh, 360p is probably actually okay for a phone screen. I prefer 480p because there's actually an audio difference between 360p and 480p. The uh, 360p degrades the video and the audio. 480p degrades the video, but you get the high-quality audio. So I prefer 480p, but visually... 360p is fine on, on most cell phone screens. Um, so that's how you find those. And you can find them on Amazon. You can find them on eBay. Stuff like that. You can find them anywhere. Trigger boards are everywhere. Yeah. I just like better quality audio. Audio. You know, it's more full. It doesn't sound as teeny. Um, but yeah, they've lowered their um, specials now to $1.79. Um, so now if you go on the um, the app, you can get things like, this is a pretty neat deal. 15 amp, 12 volt USB um, power supply for $1.79. They also have razors for $1.79 now. I grabbed a couple of them, the ones that look like they were made of metal. So I grabbed a few of those. I'll see how they turn out. Um, the the Toyo S08 Pro IR humidity sensor and temp sensor unit works great. Yes, New Mexico, and it's fantastic. 75 degrees today. <laughs> um, uh, this is um, AliExpress, their app. You can't do it on the PC. It only works on the app. But you get to, oh, I also ordered a couple of these. The hats with the baklava and ear shields, because I burn so easily. I need hats like that. I don't. I don't usually need the face piece, but I need the around the back and the ears. Otherwise, I get burned with cinder. <laughs> um, so I was like, for buck eighty, I grabbed a couple. Uh, well, no, if you're careful, it's pretty safe. So the big thing is, um, I'll show it to you if we get to it. Um, Let's see what do we got here. Um, I might grab that because I think I might be able to resell that locally. It's a um, a rubber stamp kit. It's all the capital letters of the alphabet. So you get twenty six, I think, or a pack of forty actually. 
So um, I, I might be able to sell that locally, so I might grab that. Um, if you're in a different country, it might look different. Um, I've been grabbing these as quick as I can. These um, little cameras, because I want to make a rocket kit based around them. It's not high quality video. In fact, it's garbage video. But the cameras are small, and they have a feature that is critical for rocketry. First of all, fixed focus camera. So you don't have to worry about the autofocus being jacked by the G's of um, the flight. But here's the cool part. All I do is press the power button. That's it. You see it's blinking already. It's recording. That's it. I don't have to, I don't have to press two buttons. I don't have to do a multi-press. Nothing. You tap the button. It begins recording. You tap the button again. I think it stops. Or you tap and hold turn it off which i'm fine with yeah there it goes now it's off but you just single press power and it turns on and it begins recording once you see the um um the blinking there it is power just turned on red light starts blinking it's recording um, that's really important for rocketry because a lot of the times it's in the rocket and we're at the pad and I need to confirm the damn thing's actually recording. <laughs> um, I, uh, on the, the world's first, and I am the first, 4K video from a rocket, I did it using a cell phone because um, that was the only affordable way to get 4K video at the time. You know, 4K cameras cost a fortune, tens of thousands of dollars. But at the time, Samsung was putting 4K cameras in their cell phones. So I mounted the cell phone in my rocket, and it worked, except I missed the entire liftoff. It was like, three, two, one. Blur, 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 blur. And then when the motor stopped firing, then it was clear again. <laughs> so because the phone had autofocus, there's actually multiple little lens elements inside the camera that move back and forth to focus. And what happened is because I had the camera mounted like this, what would happen is that 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 autofocus element would go eh, and get stuck all the way forward to because the G's, you know, you know, 50 G's of thrust <laughs> would hold that autofocus camera all the way at the bottom, which was blurry, until the thrust let up, and then the camera would autofocus. <laughs> um, so what I had to do was I had to mount the phone like this. So instead of, at first I, I just I designed a rocket where the phone slid into the rocket like this and the camera was looking down. So what I did is I had to mount the phone like this on the rocket and then use a 90 degree periscope to allow the camera to look down. The G's would still lock the autofocus, but it would lock in focus <laughs> instead of locking at minimum focus. <laughs> um, but that was pretty cool. Um, but this has... Um, it's round, so it's going to be relatively easy to mount, and it's got a clear red LED and one button record. A lot of these cameras, you got to press and hold the power button, wait till it turns on, it blinks at you to let you know it's turning on, and then um, sometimes video is default, sometimes picture is default, so you have to press the mode button, it'll go blink, blink, letting you know it's in video, and then you press the record button, and if you do any of that wrong, you don't get any video. <laughs> So even though this is a cheap piece of garbage, number one, I'll be able to sell the kit pretty cheaply. And number two, it's one button record. Um, it says it's 1080p. I think it's 640 by 480. I don't know. Um, I know in low light, it's absolutely garbage, but in bright light, it's actually not that bad. So I gotta actually, I gotta actually go out in the daytime and test it. It might actually be 1080p, um, just really low bit rate. So obviously bright, exposure is going to help with that but i don't really care what the resolution is it's watchable um but the the point of this is the the advantage of this is a small size built-in battery takes a micro sd card slot micro usb port to both charge and operate it and single button record even if it's off um so you just press you literally just press that button it turns on and then it begins recording that's it you have positive confirmation it's recording. Oh, most of these little microcams are scams. 
you know, when, when, when they're selling them for $6, it's not 1080p. <laughs> if you're lucky, it's 720 by 480 So at least it's 16 by 9 And to be fair, 7, 720 by 480 is not bad. As long as the bit rate is high enough. Um, 720 by 40, which is DVD resolution, is that, that that's called full D1. Um, that's actually not bad quality. It's just that usually they're MJPEG with a really horrible bit rate. So we'll see. But um, for less than two dollars a piece, uh, yeah, I'm gonna grab as many as I can. Actually, I would rather have the white one. Um. But there we go. So there's here's a 30 watt. I want to get a couple of power supplies from Michelle, but they're all European, so I can't use them. I ended up grabbing a set of these um, precision wrench, precision screwdrivers. I was like, for two bucks, why not? Let's see how good it is. Um, this um, this is garbage. It's so damn slow. It's ridiculous. Like I tried copying some files over to it, and it's like 30 megabits per second, then zero. And like five minutes later, 30 megabit per second, zero. It's really bad. So stay away from that one. Um, this one I'm not sure about. Uh, I grabbed a set of these. Um, USB powered heated insoles for your shoes. So we'll see if that works out any good. Um, Timu might actually be a better place to get stickers. You can usually get 500 stickers on one of their specials for about a buck, buck fifty. I've never ordered from there yet. Um, the these GPS units they work. There's nothing wrong with them. They just don't really work in the United States. Now, one place where they might work is if I can make them work with Red Pocket. If I can make them work with the um, the 200 megabyte plan with Red Pocket, then you're only paying two dollars and twenty five cents a month, and suddenly that becomes usable 30 bucks a year um but you need one that's 4g compatible since they're shutting down 3g networks here in the u.s it's a new mbno the united states um and there's we only have three cell phone providers in the united states we have verizon um we have at&t and we have t-mobile sprint t-mobile the same um, i believe at&t bought the smaller um, providers that we had, like, um, oh, what was it called? There was a couple of regional providers, and at and bought them up. T-Mobile and Sprint merged. So we only have three cell phone providers in the U.S. Uh, but we, but Sprint, T-Mobile, and now Verizon's getting into the game. I guess they realize they're losing money on it. We have a lot of what's called MBNA, MBNOs, um, Mobile Virtual Network Operator. So basically, like right now, I'm using Hello Mobile. That's my cell phone company. It's it's T-Mobile. Um, Hello Mobile buys access to the T-Mobile network and then sells it at a profit to us. So we have a whole bunch of these MVNOs in the U.S. Um, Boost Mobile is an MVNO. Um, Red Pocket's an MVNO. Mint Mobile is an MVNO. Um, Hello Mobile is an MVNO. They're all MVNOs. Um, they don't have any towers of their own. They're buying access to either T-Mobile, Verizon, or um, AT&T's network. Well, it depends on what, well, well, with the rate, with how much money your cell phone providers charge you guys, there might not be a profit margin available for an MVNO. Here there is. Um, let's see, what else I got here? I think I grabbed one of these box openers because it looked kind of neat. For the price. This is a neat um uh bolt meter for solar setup. That's a neat price. What else they got here? Uh stickers, stickers. They toss in some of these, you know, more than dollar seventy nine things every now and then. Oh, here's a type C and it looks like American. Is that American? Yes, it is. 20 watt. And it's GAN? Really? It's probably fake. It's probably not a gallium nitride. Oh, no. There's EU, which I don't want. 
of course, the U.S. is not available. So the only ones available are the two European ones. The U.S. ones aren't actually available. See how they're grayed out? Thanks for wasting my time there, buddy. <laughs> I was thinking about getting that at one point just because it looks funky. <laughs> I mean, what's that? Uh, seven LED um, reflectors in there. <laughs> I just thought that was cute. But I didn't get it. I've been grabbing these extensions, not this one. There's another one that you can get up to three meters. So it's a USB 3.0 three meter extension. I'm like, hell yeah, for a buck 80. Um, uh, there's another one. Is it US? EU? No. They have a US one, but it's grayed out. It's not available. It's like, why even show that? Nobody can use it here. Like, just eliminate it from the U.S. website because you can't use it. I grabbed one of these, this 1080p G2 Miracast Display Anycast, because I am pretty sure that I will be able to connect that to this. So this is that Dope's Play screen that I got. Really, really freaking nice. So this is um, an external monitor. Except um, this is really neat because, you know, here, yeah, all right, ready for this? It's battery powered. No wires. <laughs> I freaking love it. So I am super stoked about this. Um, if you go to nearest.com, there's a link. You can get a discount from either Amazon or directly from Dope's Play. Uh, like 190 bucks. Uh, I got it for review, so I got it for free. But um, yeah, 190 bucks. And it's a 1080p HDMI display. You can um, you can plug it if you have if your phone has full feature 